In essence, my work is a statement against superficiality. It shows how things are made and what they truly exist of. There's no Photoshop airbrushing, it's just a real forensic investigation. British artist Nick Vesey has a talent, showing us a side of everyday items we rarely see. And he shied away from the glitzy galleries and studios in downtown London, instead taking up shop in the English countryside. Now I've got my own working studio adjacent to the gallery, I do feel a bit like a performance artist because people come and see me doing it and they can share in the process. I really enjoy the reaction from the people because they can't believe how complicated it is. It's such a surreal experience that visitors are left in awe, even after a detailed behind the scenes look. The uh, X-ray film has to be processed using chemistry. Um, so I come in just for a look around. I get to meet the artist himself. He appears out of nowhere. <laughs> it's extraordinary. And then takes me through the process of how these amazing pieces, these x-rays, are actually produced. I mean, uh, yeah, it, you really have to experience this place. It's incredible. One of the leading artists to have harnessed x-rays for the art world, Vasey is now looking to bring in others with an unorthodox approach to display their pieces. He hopes to create a body of work that will fuse the miracle of science with the beauty of art. To see how Nick Vizi fuses those elements together, the artist himself joins us from our London studio. Hello Nick, welcome to our show. Hello, thanks for having me on. Of course. Um, we've just seen your work and you obviously have a very unusual technique. I was just wondering about the significance of X-ray as an artistic material for you. I think it's really important um, to sort of record the world as it stands today um, and X-ray does it in a sort of a unique way. It shows everything from the inside out so um, I think it's really significant. Mm -hmm. So for example Seeing your work, it made me think that the world we see is, for example, deeper than it appears in the first glance, and it has many layers to it. Was that your aim? Indeed, yes. Um, I think society is sort of too obsessed with superficial appearance, you know, where we live, what we drive, what we wear, all that sort of stuff. It matters on one level, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I think. You know, I'm getting older in life, I'm 56, and what really matters to me are my memories and experiences and the feelings you get inside um, and my work because it strips away the surface and looks inside an object. I think it, um, it has quite uh, sort of a lot of resonance and uh, significance. But I'm wondering how it all started for you. What's your story? So, yeah, so um, I was sort of struggling trying to be a photographer um, at the end of the film age and the beginning of the digi digital age, the late 90s. And um, I was lucky enough to get uh, a brief from a, uh, a TV show where they needed an X-ray of a soda can. And um, it had a sales promotion that when you pulled the ring, ring pull off the can, psh, um, it had a magic letter, a bit like the Willy Wonka story with a magic ticket. And one of these cans is worth £100,000 and the TV show was quite light-hearted and they needed an image which said how can we cheat, how can we see where the magic ring pull is on the can, cut to x-ray of can. So um, first thing I did was ring up a hospital and uh, understandably they said go away, they were too busy treating patients, but also x-ray is used in industry. Um, for instance, when you take a flight and you land, all the pressure is transferred through the landing gear so that landing gear is x-rayed every so many thousand hours of use to make sure there's no cracks or fatigue in the metal. And I use that technology to create art. Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing this? 25 years or so. Um, um, by now I'm actually getting quite good at it. <laughs> you know, I, I love what I do. I'm, like many artists, self-obsessed. Um, I sort of continue working in, in the same uh, medium because uh, in some ways it limits you, but I think it makes you uh, sort of refine your process and you refine your ideas um, so that as I get older, I think my work's getting better. Mm -hmm. 
And just to make it clearer for everyone, what exactly do you do with X-ray? So you have some objects that you scan or do you place them on some sort of a special material? How, can you please talk us through the process? Yeah, of course, yeah. So the first thing to consider with X-ray is that it's dangerous, it's radioactive. So I have to um, carry out my X-rays in a room that contains the radiation. Um, that can be made from concrete or from lead. I have a very thick uh, uh, concrete bunker um, and the X-rays are happening inside the room, but I go outside the room while the X-rays are on. And then once the X-rays are finished, I go back inside the room and I take the object um, off film. I still use film, the old fashioned analog way. I then process the film and then scan it and play with it on the computer. Where it gets really complicated is when the objects are large because the X-ray image is exactly the same size as the object when it captured on the film. So if, if the object is larger than a sheet of film, the largest sheet of film is 35 by 43 centimetres. So for big objects like cars, there's maybe 500, 700 X-rays involved in something like that and uh, months and months of work. And that's what I'm known for, the sort of laborious, um, uh, complicated, uh, wow, I didn't realise you could X-ray that type um, impression. That was great, Nick. Thanks for joining us on Showcase. Thanks a lot.